there's something very strange about these two men. These San Francisco brothers are on a mission to make the largest ball of rubber bands the world has ever seen. It's taken them six years so far. They've tied together almost a ton and a half of rubber bands to date, and they say they sometimes work as many as 11 hours a day. We had to ask them why. I have a high blood pressure. When I work on it, it goes down. Man has been playing with rubber for thousands of years, and despite the invention of synthetic alternatives, nothing is quite as elastic as natural rubber. The great rubber plantations of Segambut, northwest Malaysia. The hot, wet, tropical climate here is perfect for growing all kinds of exotic fruits and is also ideal for rubber trees. The bark of the tree is delicately sliced diagonally. And from this five millimeter deep gash, a white liquid slowly dribbles down. This milky substance is latex. Each tree produces about 50 grams of latex every time it's milked. The challenge now is to turn runny latex into springy rubber. First, the latex is filtered to remove impurities, such as leaves. Then it's mixed with acid in these baths for 10 hours to solidify it. Then the latex is fed through a mangle in order to remove the excess acid and water. The latex is shredded, leaving it looking like overcooked scrambled eggs and then it's heated in these huge ovens for 13 minutes. It emerges looking like a sponge cake and it's ready to be compressed into blocks which will be shipped abroad. The latex cakes finally make their way across the world to Hot Springs, Arkansas. Hometown of the young Bill Clinton and also the equally elastic Alliance Rubber Company. Its annual output would stretch from the Earth to the Moon and back five times, or as far as Mars if you pulled really hard. Here, as in San Francisco, rubber exerts a strange hold over people. This guy doesn't feel dressed unless he's wearing one of these fetching rubber suits. Probably the main thing that I like really about it, it helps keep my weight under control. You know, I can shed a few pounds off real quick. And of course, if I put on a few pounds, she stretches right along with me. But not everyone here is quite so enthusiastic. Actually, some people, you know, it's a fantasy just to have a rubber suit and dress up in rubber. They like to fill a rubber up against them. Not me. I like to fill a rubber on my hands, and that's it. I like polyester and cotton. The latex is halfway to becoming rubber, but it's not yet strong enough to make a rubber band. It has to undergo a process called vulcanization. For this, you need a cocktail of chemicals. Most we add a little sulfur and a lot of other magical ingredients to make it come out to be a rubber band. The rubber is fed into a mixing oven. The chemicals are added, the materials are kneaded together and heated, and the rubber is turned from soft dough into the elastic form which we recognize as rubber. When the rubber reaches 120 degrees Celsius, it's dropped onto a giant rolling pin which cools and rolls it into strips. Then a machine called the extruder shapes the rubber into a hose, ready to be cut into bands. On this line, 3,000 rubber bands are cut every minute. Once the rubber bands have passed quality control, they're packaged and sent to Nabil and Samir in San Francisco. It just gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> 